What's good in the hood, Law in Oklahoma? It's your boy Tristan for Dummies. You are now tuned in to People Watching with Tristan for Dummies. I'm sitting on the porch with my homeboy, Jesse Dalton. Y'all know him. Y'all heard him on the radio. Y'all know he's popular, popping out in these streets. So I'm sitting down with Jesse today. He wanted to offer um, his own perspective on what life is like here in Oklahoma. Not just the city of Lawton, but throughout this great state of ours. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to your boy, Jesse. What's up with y'all? Thank you for Tristan for Dummies for coming through. Just here at my house. We're on the porch over here. Dude, I just woke up. I just wanted to put a little inside. I've been watching all the episodes of Tristan for Dummies, and I see a lot of people that say, you know, the first thing that people have been saying lately is, I can't wait to move. I hear that a lot. You hear that a lot, Tristan? Yeah. I hear that a lot. They say, you know, uh, even these young cats that be in high school, and they'll be like, I, when I turn 18, I'm getting out of here. I'm leaving. Doing this, that's all good if you're going to go to school and, and better yourself and everything. But let, let's take it from somebody who's been around. Yeah. I've lived in New York. I've lived in the East Coast. I've exactly. lived on the West Coast. I've traveled to Europe, backpacked through Europe. I came back to Oklahoma because I wanted to come back to Oklahoma. Oklahoma has a heritage that not a lot of other states have. Oklahoma has an agenda that not a lot of other states have. Uh, I like to say that this is a home. This is a place to raise a family. This is a place to s sow your seeds, bury your roots. Uh, for me, I mean, you see my, my logo is I am Oklahoma. That's because I am Oklahoma. I love it. I love to be here. I love everything about Oklahoma. Everybody's stuck on this violence thing in Lawton, but if you reach just across the fence, we got all these small towns out here that don't have a crime rate. There isn't any murders, nothing like that. It's just regular people doing regular things. And you know what? Let me interject something, because I'm glad you brought up the crime thing. How I look at it, though, most of the motherfuckers, excuse my French, that's out here that are perpetuating all this violence, aspire to shit they see in other places. Because yeah. that's not the culture we're bred from, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's people looking and seeing what's going on in places like New York or, you know, too many people here don't take pride in what they have, the heritage here. Yeah. And so they aspire to become like something somewhere else. So that negative influence is, is, is not indigenous to where we from. And I think a lot of mentality has been skewed in the younger people that are committing these crimes because, like I said, they're venturing off and they're trying to be like people they see you hate to say in music or in videos, but it's the truth. In Compton. Right. Well, this is law. Law. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, it's that gangster mentality. And, I mean, we got a lot of gangsters out here. Don't get me wrong. I ain't downing them. In, in At all. Style. I mean, they, they, they doing that thing. But, um, I mean, this is Oklahoma. And if we're going to. I mean, look, look around. We have the Moore Tornado and all the support that comes out. From every corner of Oklahoma, people reach out and, and just touch this community that nobody, I don't know, any, I mean, I know some people are more, but I don't know nobody that was affected by that tornado. You want to ask me if got this bike coming by? See, we are live. We're sitting on the porch out here. Uh, you want to ask me if I went up there and, and helped out? Yeah, I did. And I don't know nobody up there. And it's just because, just things like that. Like, we all band together every time something happens out here. And it seems like out here in my community, a lot and a lot of stuff's been falling apart lately. A lot of there's there's not a lot of support like there is in other places in Oklahoma. I mean, uh, a lot of the youngsters are coming up with not much to do because there ain't a lot to do out here for these young cats. Right, right. That are uh, you know below the age of 18 and. And, and even on that. top of that, you can't even just say they they aspiring. I'm I'm going to correct myself. Just aspiring to be like somebody else. But everybody knows idle hands are the devil's workshop. Yeah. So if you don't give kids something to do, they're going to find something to do. See, I kind of went the other way. And when my parents told me I didn't have nothing to do, I jumped out in the creek and uh, started pulling out catfish. You got to be seeing your noodling pics, yeah, man. man I, I, you didn't even I'm invite me to go noodling. I'm swolled up right now. You invited now. Pappy. You didn't invite me. Pappy's What's up? scared out, man. <laughs> hey, Pappy, you need to come on with it, man. I know that you, you said, oh, I'm going to out, go out in the morning. Man, I went out with a busted knee the next morning, Pappy, and he was talking about, I'm asleep right now. I'm scared yeah. in the mug, too, but Joe I'm Biggs, willing to try it. I told you, you need to get out in the creek. He said, yeah, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Black Jones, I told him, too. Everybody's been saying I'm gonna do it. Super Smith, 
Hey, but them 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 catfish you holding up on your profile pic, them some monsters who if I reach my hand down to some shit and that mug latch on, it's gonna scare the That's shit out of me. That's what happens to you. Whenever, whenever <laughs> Look at that, let me get a close up on this. Look. Yeah. It's all good though. I mean, that's real Oklahoma ain't no shit pain, right ain't there. No though. glory, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, that's real Oklahoma stuff right there. That's part of. It's another part of our my heritage that I I bring to the table. I mean, a lot, not a lot of people know that Oklahoma was the first state that anybody ever noodled in. That this is where it came from. It branched out. Texas came on the came on deck with it just nine years ago. It's not a it's not a real well known thing until lately on TV. And all that, you see everything going on with it. But I've been doing this for, for 15 years. But uh, but yeah, this this Lawton thing. I mean, I live on the south side. We're right here on the south side. We on Summit. I stay on the north side of the south side. And uh, I mean, this is Smoker Town. But ain't nobody ever come over to my house acting a fool. Ain't no violence ever astray over into my yard. But I mean, you reap. I mean, violence begats violence, bro. Yeah, it does. But I mean, at the same time, uh. A lot of people attract the wrong element to their situation. I mean, if you look into all these cases with stuff going on, it's all circumstantial. A lot of circumstances people have put in, and they got to pull out a pistol and, yeah. and start blasting on somebody. But really, we need to get out of that mentality where I'd rather get caught with it than caught without it mentality, where people are like, oh, well, I'd rather the police pull me over with a pistol than, uh, than me get caught without it and get shot. Yeah. I mean, when I was going to school out here, we was, we was still, <laughs> real shit going down right now. <laughs> she need a ride right now. Somebody come pick her up. <laughs> hey, I mean, when I was coming up to school out here. We was going to that Lawton Highs and Howard Gaming banging each other, but ain't nobody ever pulled out a pistol out there. It ain't never happened. It ain't never happened. We was always out in front of Stripes across the street from Cameron Stadium, and we fight. And they spray us with mace, the whole crowd, you know what I'm saying? And that was when I was going to school here. I know it goes back. <laughs> I know it goes back even farther than that, but uh, right now it's a hard time for the community a lot. I mean, we're, we're up to it. We got, I don't even know how many murders we got this year so far. We got a lot. Yeah, we do, and uh, and it's a, it's a, it's time for people to embrace if, if this is what we're gonna become and evolve into, or if we're gonna try to backtrack a little little bit and step back and and watch people watch. Yeah, and figure out what we're gonna do with this community and say as a whole, we need to come together. And uh, I don't know. It's it's a real hard it's a real hard thing to do. Cause we got a lot of cats out here. I, I mean, I ride with cats that I know they're doing the wrong shit, you know. And I know, like, man, this dude right here, he's gonna be in some trouble. Yeah. But and it's hard for me to step back and say I can't, you know, I can't associate with myself with these people no more. But that's what I do. I stay out here. I go out. I get in the creek. I go hunting. I do. I do a lot of the Oklahoma stuff. Shoot, I got a gar head over here on a stick. Yeah. How many people you know got a gar head on a stick in front of their house? That's an alligator gar head over Go here. Go <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it gets graphic yeah. over here. But, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I'd really like to get this out there for the community and, and let them know that, I mean, there's gangsters out here, but gangsters are calm, cool, and collective. Yeah. And it, it don't, if, if you're trying to prove to everybody you're a, you're a gangster and make examples, you're not really a gangster. You know what I'm saying? He's like, um, old girl was saying on the other video, like, you can't jeopardize the money you're allegedly trying to make by being out here, being reckless, and like you said, trying to make examples and, and making off on the cuff, you know, decisions that are gonna jeopardize your, your future or jeopardize your freedom. Like, the, the motherfuckers I know that's really about that, like you said, they ain't out there making noise because they don't want to attract the attention because they want to keep what they got going, going. Yeah, you know what not even that, but I mean, there's that, that phrase that we come about from the movies, you know, we pass out turkeys like Nino Brown. Gangsters are supposed to affect their community in a positive way. Not only do they affect, I mean, that, that movie is a great example, but not only do they affect it in negative ways, but they reach back into the community and touch the community. And, and let's even touch on why why they came 
to be in the first place. It was it was actually everybody within the community or certain people from the community coming together to safeguard that community, yeah. to protect that community from intruders coming in and disrupting, you know, what they had going, not wreaking havoc on the people that lived there. And most of the time, if you talk to a real a real thug, he'll tell you not to do what he's doing. That's real shit right there. I mean, I I know I know a lot of OGs, and I always tell you, man, just don't even get involved because there's only two places that you're gonna end up with. Yeah. You know, it's very. That's why they are OGs, is because they're the only ones left. Really, they're the only gangsters left because all their homies are dead or in prison. And yeah, we don't want that. We want we want people coming out a lot and to get great scholarships and go to college and do great things for this community so people say so he can say later on in life or she can say later on in life that I'm from Lot and I came from a very, very rough community and I've become this. Exactly. That's what we need out here. We need young people with aspirations to go places and do great things. Because I tell you every time I, I read a headline about a young person, you know, being killed, being shot or whatever, the first, one of the first things I think is damn like we, we've lost. What was what was their potential? You know, Where what would have they contributed go? to the not only to law but to the you know you know what I'm yeah. saying? You never know what that person held within them, and now it's gone forever. And like I just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't go around judging or knocking people, but I, I really want people to to start being conscious of the decisions that they make, and seeing beyond their actions, not only how it affects them, but how it affects everybody. Because your life. Just think how many people your life touches alone. You know what I'm saying? Like what you bring to the world impacts somebody, even if you're not trying to. Yeah. And I and I feel that way about every person here. We we're all so interconnected and we're all feeding off of one another. Like we gotta we gotta get it under control. Like you said, we can't sit back and just people watch as our our, our city transform into something unlivable where we're we're, we're living in fear Everybody all the time. Everybody wants to leave. Yeah. Man, I can't stand that. I, I I hear people that are like, hey, I'm from Lawton. I can't wait to get out of this place. I'm like, I can't wait to change this place. And it's got to be met from both yeah, ends, you bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's gonna take, it's gonna take an epiphany, is what I'm thinking. It's gonna take a revelation from the community here. Something, something really bad is gonna end up happening, and then people are gonna start understanding that lot is going down a real bad road. And I mean, every neighborhood now. It used to be we had some nice neighborhoods. I think now we got one nice neighborhood, and that's where all the rich gangsters live at. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, it's every every single neighborhood now is just like, you You can, I mean, look across the street, look up, go over there to Motif Manor. Go over there, look across the street, at, look at all the Candlewood, Motif Manor, Melrose, all those apartments, and then walk a block over. And you see the difference in community. And there's kids outside playing on slip and slides in the yard. Yeah. Over here in Candlewood, there's kids outside playing while their parents are sitting outside drunk. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're just sitting out there drinking. Nothing to do. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, a lot of it. Uh, I'm pro-gun control now. <laughs> I've changed my whole deal. Like I used to be that. Yeah, I would be the first dude you would see riding around with a pistol. And uh, in the last couple of weeks, I've seen just everything that's been going on and adding it all up. And I think, you know, what I'm saying, if you ain't got it, then you can't use it. So, uh, yeah, I'm pro gun control now. I think that should probably create a law that says people can't bring nothing out of the house, and if you do, it's a felony charge, and you go to prison You're just riding with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that there's, it's just too much going on down here, too much access to all these street weapons for people to be, uh, something's going to happen, you know what I mean? And, and the a lot sad of, a lot reality of the shootings is... out here, it's the other dude didn't have a gun. Right. And, and one dude shot that dude, and he didn't have nothing. Like, you know, it ain't, we're not gun fighting out here. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a one um, it's a one man deal, yeah. you know what I mean? Or it's a security guard killing somebody because he pulled out a gun. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not... They don't call for riding around with a pistol in your seat, afraid to be at the stoplight for too long, making right turns all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, we, we ain't got to that point yet, so, but we're taking it there ourselves. Yeah. You know I mean? And and I, and I don't want and I don't want to come across like I'm devaluing anybody's life when I say this, but I think part of the the issue is the right person, and I'm using finger quotes when I say that yeah. the right person hasn't been killed yet. Like 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the minds of the people who are in positions of power that can actually bring about change, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They haven't been touched personally. So it, 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 there's no sense of urgency yeah. on their part. You know, whereas if it's my cousin, if it's your nephew, we see the sense of, you know, immediacy, but it hasn't directly affected the Abruptly, right people. And when it yeah. does, watch how swiftly you'll see things Turn begin. Turn your TV on. Exactly. Yeah. It's going to be blown up. And they're going to... So... And, it, that, and that's another thing. Then everybody will be saying, but what about all this? That, what about that, the 45 yeah. other people? You know, yeah. yeah. So... You know, it's a... It's one of those things, man. As soon as somebody is... And, and I, I don't want that to happen at all. I wish we could get into a state of regression right now to where we ain't got to do all that. But it, it seems like, yeah, so as soon as the first person that's touched that that is going to affect the, the person up there, yeah. you know what I mean, uh, on the top of law and the people that are, that are calling these shots out here in City Hall and, and doing stuff like that, whenever somebody's touched like that, it's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be a big deal to the whole town. Right. You know what I mean? It, it, to the it's not going to be a bigger home. deal to us because we see it every day. Yeah. But right, it, it, they're going to rally behind this person, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I can't I, believe that this young man, yada, yada, yada. You know what I mean? Uh, it'll be something like that. And then, I mean, I have a feeling it's going to be a change with these gun laws anyway pretty soon. Yeah. Just because all the stuff that happens out here is crazy already. I mean, in New York, you live in New York, they give you $1,000 to come tell the police that somebody has a pistol. You're not even allowed to, you have to have a special license in the, in the city of New York, in the five boroughs. You have to have a special license to even have a weapon in your home. Shotgun, nothing. Yeah. Like you can't, it, it ain't like that. Like they give people a thousand dollars if you tell them that somebody has a gun. Nobody has a gun out there. Like, it's like, you know. And when you look at other countries, I, I, I believe even the police in Europe don't carry. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, so imagine how few gun gun crimes they experience there. You know what I'm I mean, saying? Imagine how many crimes they really solve, though. <laughs> I, I don't know what they're doing without guns over there, but I mean, I, I'm not saying the police shouldn't have guns because they got to protect But themselves. I think they do have, you know, special forces in place to come in if, yeah. you know, if it's some, some big-time shit, but... I used to be that dude. I always said this, too, uh... Especially if I was riding with a pistol and I get pulled over. I'd always tell the police, I'm protecting me while you're protecting everybody else. And I was thinking about that. I was like, man, I was like, there's something about that. I'm protecting me while you're protecting everybody else. And really, it all boiled down to me getting out of, of ha getting in trouble for riding with a pistol. <laughs> That's the only reason I was saying that. Because really, I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of a loose cannon. I will. Like, if I get in a situation where I feel pressed, like, I can't get out of it with my hands, I will be the dude that pulls out a gun and shoots somebody. That's why I'm saying something about this now. It's because there's too many. I'm just a regular person just like everybody else. And if if I'm thinking that way, then I know everybody's thinking that way. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's And that's, that's scary. And what's worse, there's a lot of people who aren't even thinking about resolving it with their hands anymore. Yeah. They're like, why, why, you know what I'm saying? It's getting to the point, like, that's not even in being considered by a lot of by a lot of people it should be we should reach another level of enlightenment though like i mean there should be something else that people can do besides solving it with violence because that all escalates you know what i mean uh, it, even if you're solving it with your hands that escalates then we're going to have a bunch of people killed out here by hand yeah you know what i mean but there's got there's got it feels like we're surrounded by walls this whole town is surrounded by walls and somebody's outside that wall watching just how we evolve and just the crazy shit that happens in here. Nobody can leave. Everybody has to stay. And, and we want to see. It's, an, it's a social experiment. Yeah. We want to see what happens. Like like Big Brother. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, that's what it feels like out here. Because, I mean, everybody wants to get out, but nobody's leaving. Because I was talking, somebody was saying something um, about the cost of living being so cheap. But you have to think about it. The cost of living might be cheap, but the wages are low. The way you know what I'm saying, so the cost of living has actually continued to to it's rise gradually. Yeah, you go but to New the York wages... from here right now. You think the cost of living? Uh, I'm talking about. You think everybody says like, oh, well, you pay, you know, a thousand dollars a month for a one bedroom apartment in Brooklyn. Yeah, you do, but you make a lot more than a thousand dollars a month. You know exactly. what I'm saying? I mean, I, I pulled out of there making eighteen dollars an hour, like as a bartender. Right. You know, plus tips, and and I was just like, whatever. And I left all that to come back to this place. 
and and watch all that's going on in the last two years that I've I've been back and it's like man like every day somebody else is gone you know what I'm saying like and it's touched me personally because I've lost people out here now that I that I've not, I know in these streets right and uh, people I just didn't ever think nobody was gonna have the problem with them to kill them to yeah. kill a person take a person's life that's a, that's a, that's crazy man that's uh we got to try to get it under control. I mean, we're, we're starting a whole movement right now. We did this peace or hoops for peace thing the other day at Cameron Gymnasium, uh, and it was we had a motivational speaker that came on at 5:30 and did a whole thing for the young people, and uh, and it is exactly what we made the event to be. It's hoops for peace. Yeah. We're not trying to bring peace to other countries. We're trying to bring peace right here in our own community, and and try to make people understand that. Like I said, I was in a radio interview the other day with 103.5, and, and I told him we're trying to create a ripple. Yeah. You ever drop drop a rock in the water, and you see the ripple and how far it goes. And that's what we want to see. We want to see how far this ripple goes to make people understand that, you know, real gangsters are smart, and they know how to handle shit without doing all that. Like, everybody takes that term out of context. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Uh I think, from from my standpoint of the whole deal, I, I that's what I think is a gangster is smart. A gangster is smart, and if you want to be gangsters out there, you got to get with, you got to get intelligent and stop resorting to what you see everybody else doing. Try to be different, make a difference, because when you make a difference in your community, that's when you really are a superstar. Because then the people that you really care about that are closest to you, like I don't care if my music travels to to Cali and LA and everybody's banging my shit in LA I uh, it means most to me it's surreal whenever I pull up to the stoplight and I see somebody next to me banging my shit you know what I mean don't even know it's me yeah. and I'm like yeah that's what's up you know uh, that's making an effect on your community and I love that because whenever you make an effect out here to the people right next door to the people on the next block to the people on the west side to the people on the north side and, and everybody's on the same thing like you know that's when people are gonna just try to step in on to these young cats that are coming up thinking about all this violence. Not even young cats, keep kids my age, the people my age are doing this stuff. I mean, somebody's got to have the balls to step in and stop letting it just go. You know what I mean? You see something, say something. Don't I mean as long as you ain't coming in, in a negative vibe, if you see something and say something to them and try to be the peacemaker, nobody's gonna hate you for it. You ain't going to get knocked out for being a peacemaker. Believe me. I mean, that's that, that's all I got to really say about it is uh, try to make a difference in this community and, and you'll see how far it takes you and how many people really care about you and the legacy that you're building whenever you're making a positive effect on your community. All right. Well, I want to thank you for your time, bro. Thank you for your insights. Uh, really? Real quick, let the people know what you got coming up next and oh, what to look man. out for from you. Them PBC Awards. Y'all got to get out to them PBC Awards on June 8th. Man, auditorium. Get the tickets at K98. They got them for $10, I think, just for a couple more days. Then they're going to they gonna hit y'all over the head at the door for 20 So y'all better get in there. Uh, matter of fact, I'm just going to say this. Y'all just be outside at about, like, 645. Don't go in yet. Just be outside. I got, I got something for you. No, 645, June 8th. June 8th, PBC okay. Awards. Everybody's going to be walking in. Don't rush in to get your seat. Y'all just hang be out and see what's about to pop. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hang out. It ain't gonna be no shots popping off. Let's just say that. <laughs> All right, bro. Already.